When my wife came out to me as transgender four years ago, we could have never imagined the path that lay ahead of us. We also couldn't have imagined the amazing people we would meet along the way. Holly Smith is also the wife of a trans woman. Her wife, Cassie, came to terms with embarking on a transition journey of her own after watching one of our videos. Both of our families were deeply rooted in the Mormon faith. And in recent years, both of our families have forged our own paths in our journey of love and acceptance, learning many new things and unlearning many other things along the way. A few years ago, when my wife came out as transgender publicly, I was still in a place of feeling pretty alone and like there probably wasn't a ton of women in my same situation, and a ton of families in our same situation. But something magical ended up happening and I started making friends on the internet that were in a similar situation as me. And I have one of those friends with me here today, Holly Smith. She's amazing. And her wife, Cassie, has recently transitioned. If you've ever been isolated and feeling alone, it is a wonderful feeling when you learn that you're not alone and there's other people going through something similar. So our conversation today, we're talking about our experiences as the spouses of trans women. Our wives have beautiful stories and their stories really matter. And our stories really matter too. So I'm so glad we're doing this. You have beautiful wisdom on this journey and I'm so excited for you to be able to share that with people. Well, thank you. I'm so grateful for how we have crossed paths with you guys and gotten to meet you guys. You're, meeting you guys meant the world to both Cassie and I and having you to relate with and to not feel that isolation, just like you were talking about, it was life-changing. So thank you. When Shay came out to me, like when I first understood that she was transgender, Honestly, nothing could have prepared me for that moment. I was so surprised. I knew that my life was changing in that moment. What was that like for you when when your wife came out to as transgender? The same. She had tried to explain her feelings of gender dysphoria years earlier, but neither of us had the terminology for it. And so we kind of just ignored it and tried to pretend it wasn't there. But when it got to be too hard, she started therapy and and came to the conclusion that she was transgender and finding that out was a life-changing moment just like you said it changed my whole life and it was really scary and terrifying not knowing what the future meant what the future was going to hold for us it was heartbreaking to realize that this was what she had been experiencing her whole life but also heartbreaking in a selfish way realizing that the future that I had envisioned together was no longer going to be. And very isolating, feeling like I couldn't talk with anyone about it. And I was all alone in feeling these ways. Yeah, from my perspective, it was so interesting because I had studied a lot of feminism and like gender theory. Um, I have a PhD in English. And so one of my areas was studying gender theory. And so there was a part of my brain that really understood that. And yet I had never applied that to my own family. And so I was, I also remember feeling really stunned. And even though I knew a little bit about trans people, it was like putting that into my life was stunning and it was very isolating. It's so hard because so many people do not understand this. It's so poorly understood. And so even the idea, trying to figure out how I could even talk to people about it was really, was really tricky at first. When your wife came out to you, how would you say it fit into your worldview at the time? I would say that it did not fit into my worldview. <laughs> uh, growing up very religious in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I always felt that it was wrong. And knowing Cassie ahead of time, knowing her intimately before finding out about this, did not match. It did not match what I had been taught and what I had believed all of my life. And I also had a very view, narrow view of the world and just gender stereotypes in general. And and it just threw me for a loop. I, I didn't know what to expect. And it opened my eyes to so many different things. I know exactly what you mean. It threw you for a loop because what your religious worldview had taught you was different than what you were seeing in front of your face, right? Absolutely. You were taught that this was deviant and you knew better. You knew your partner right? and that she wasn't deviant. I think we had a similar experience. Then you kind of go, what else isn't true that I've been taught, right? <laughs> it really blows your mind in a lot of ways. 
I would say just just knowing Cassie and the person that she is and the person that she had tried so hard to to be to try and be who society told her she was supposed to be and and who in the church she was told she should be and how much that was hurting her and literally driving her to wanting to end her life because it was not who she was inside and seeing that up close and firsthand it was really hard to come to terms with and hard to understand how to move forward with that yes and i remember even just a couple years ago when we met you Cassie was in the bishopric of your LDS ward. So for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically the priesthood leadership in a Mormon congregation. And so then she was able to be herself and and break away from those things. She was in the bishopric at the time of of coming to terms with all of those. She had been trying so hard, so hard to push away these feelings and to try and be who everyone expected and wanted her to be. It was a really hard process for both of us to be able to move past that. Um, but seeing her come into herself has been such an amazing, an amazing thing to witness. One of the hardest things in our journey was, first of all, just within our little family, trying to figure out exactly what was going on and what the best step forward was. But then it was also, how do we communicate that with the other people in our lives? How do we, how do we share this with people? What language do we use to even share this with people? What was that like for you? It was terrifying. And honestly, for the first little while, we didn't want to tell anyone at all. It was such a taboo thing that we felt was so inherently wrong that we didn't want to share it with anyone and wanted to just try and deal with it the best we could behind closed doors. And we realized that we couldn't do that. Cassie needed a support system beyond what I was able to provide her with. And so we we had to start telling family and trying to figure out how to do that was so hard. The fear of being misunderstood and trying to figure out how to explain these feelings that she's had all of her life and explain it in a way that someone who is cisgender and has never even thought twice about their gender identity, trying to figure out how to explain it to them was such a hard thing. Did some of those conversations go better than you thought that they would? Yes. we. Cassie, that was her deepest, darkest fear, was letting anyone know these feelings that she had had. And so she was terrified to tell family. And it was such an amazing and wonderful surprise to see the love that people were willing to share, even though they didn't understand or even some agree with, they were willing to offer love and support, which meant the world to both of us. Oh, yeah. it You just need it so bad. And with all the family stuff, a question that we get asked a lot is, does everybody support you? Or, you know, have you lost, have you lost anybody along the way or any like important friends in your lives? And I don't know what it's been like for you guys, but for us, the people who stay and support have been, have meant so much to us. And it's hard sometimes when others don't understand, but it's enough, you know, to have those like genuine connections. But what has it been like within your um, circle of family and friends? Our family has been very much supportive and loving. They obviously, everyone is still learning and adjusting and trying to understand in a way that they can be more supportive, but they, they're accepting and loving and want to do everything that they can to support us in the ways that they can. Yeah. And I think sometimes people really surprise you. I mean, sometimes people surprise you for the worse, especially, especially people online in, in my experience, but in real life, people usually surprise you for the better. And that has been a really happy surprise with how um, polarized a lot of the public dialogue is about this. I expected it to be a lot worse personally. It's been such an amazing feeling to have support and love in places that we never would have expected. So I think about Shay first came out to me. It's been almost four and a half years, which is so it's that's insane that it's been that long. It's been such a process and I think change takes time and like adapting takes time. But I wondered, looking at that worldview that you started off with versus where you are today, what has that process been like for you? It has been hard. I'd like to say that it was easy, flip the switch, acceptance. And I loved and accepted Cassie from the beginning. But learning and understanding and getting to the point where I was able to 
truly celebrate her authenticity and feel 100% comfortable with it, it has been a process of learning and hearing her story. That has been what has helped me the most is listening to her and hearing her story and her experiences and trying to think of her perspective and think of what she's gone through. And that has changed everything for me. It's changed my whole view of the world. And being able to listen to others' experiences that have been different than my own has allowed me to love her and others so much more. Oh, I love that. And to me, it comes down to the word humanization because at first it's the opposite. It's like really pathologized where, and you're reading about it and you're like, oh my gosh, like there's all these big words and uh, it's so like overwhelming. But then when you meet the people, these are just people like everybody else, just like me, just like everybody that I love. In fact, the, the person you love the most is in this pathologized category and they're so beautiful and human. Oh, well, and something that's so beautiful about that is how love love finds a way that sounds so like cheesy but the love was there and so you were motivated to sit through those hard moments with her i think that that's something that i see with a lot of people parents of trans people just loved ones of trans people even if they don't fully understand i mean how much can we really jump into each other's like beings and understand what our lived experiences are even but the love to sit in that with them, then you do get there eventually of just having that deeper understanding. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question. I know it's not the first time you've been asked it, but it's kind of an awkward question because it's really personal. So has your sexual attraction changed now that your, your wife has transitioned? So this was something I was very concerned about. For a long time, we both were trying to like figure out how do we label ourselves? What do we what do we call ourselves? We are still very attracted to each other. And I believe full heartedly that there is a spectrum of sexuality and I fall differently on the spectrum than I might have realized before. I know exactly what you mean about labels too, because I think the LGBTQ plus community has a lot of descriptive words that are great because it helps people to self-identify and explain what they're experiencing. But then I think there's a lot of liminal space in between those experiences. And that's, that's okay too. And very, very human. I think it's something that is empowering for everybody to realize that sexuality and gender expression are on a pretty big continuum. And that just whatever language people like to use to describe that, just being able to fully understand it's complex like we have our people and we love them so much and again it comes back to love like it's love is such a powerful force that it it can help you to understand yourself in a totally different way I didn't understand my sexuality as fluid until she transitioned and now that's very apparent to me it doesn't really matter Cassie's my person and I'm hers and we're already married and we love each other and still love being together And so for us, it has worked really well. I recognize that not everyone in our situation that this would work for and, and that's okay. But for us, it's, it's worked really well. I don't, I think neither of us would ever shame someone who thought, nope, this doesn't work for me. And marriages end for lots of different reasons. And this is one of them. And I would certainly never hold judgment to the partner of a trans woman who, who didn't want to stay in the marriage. That's valid too. Right. I think until you've been in this experience, it's hard to imagine, but I am very attracted to Shay as a woman. I was attracted to her before she transitioned as well, but having your partner really connect with who they are is so beautiful. And so, yes, that attraction is, is almost like more intense and more meaningful than before. Absolutely. The authenticity intensifies the attraction. Something that I think would be kind of fun is to talk about some of the silly misconceptions about being in our situation. Do you feel like people are always asking you if like your womanhood, if you feel like that's impeded upon by your wife? To be honest, at first, I wasn't sure what to think because I used to define my femininity like in contrast to the masculinity. And so I was like, I I didn't understand that. But then I realized I don't feel threatened by my girlfriends like when they do anything. So why would I feel threatened by my wife when she's being feminine? Yes. Oh, I totally relate to that. And another thing I think people just assume is that we've been drugged into this. 
Like, what would you say to that? Because I'm always like, if anything, I drug Shay. <laughs> like, like, honey, this, I mean, obviously she wanted to take every step that she did, but I was also saying, I really feel like you need this. How do you respond to people's assumption about that? Yeah, 100%. I am here by choice. I am not being like roped into staying. I have chosen to stay and I love being where I'm at. Yeah, it brings challenges, but I'm here and I love it. Yeah, and it's really beautiful feeling like you're fully choosing in. I don't think I had that sense before. Like, of course I was choosing in, but it's that feeling of society doesn't necessarily expect me to stay in this. Right. In fact, maybe the stereotype would be the other way around, but I want to, and it doesn't really matter what other people think. Exactly. I feel like we're more committed now than we ever have. We're having to re-choose our marriage. We're re-choosing each other and it is beautiful. So in conclusion, I just wanted to ask you one more question. And that is, what are your hopes for your family now after your wife's transition? We are getting to such a good place within our family where we have so much love. And I just hope that we can continue to exist and go through life with acceptance from others. I hope that others can just accept us for who we are and how we are and that we can be seen and feel a sense of belonging, even though we might not follow the typical family pattern. Yeah, sometimes people are like, oh, poor kids, you know, in our videos. And I think this is such a beautiful opportunity for our kids to understand the human experience on a deeper level and, and to have two parents who are really present and authentic with them. I'm sure it's a different story or different hopes than you initially had before Cassie transitioned, but it's, it's really beautiful, isn't it? In just a different way. It is. Our kids have so much more love now. They see us being authentic and um, being devoted to each other. And they know that they can be themselves in whatever that looks like and that we will love them. And I, I know that our home is filled with so much more love. It's so hard to even understate what a big deal that is, that your kids know they can be themselves because they can see both of you doing that in such a radical way. And I wish, I wish every kid could have that. Yeah. Well, thank you for having this conversation with me. You're amazing. And I'm so grateful to have you in my life. Thank you to both you and Shay. You guys have been incredible and we're so grateful for your friendship. Thank you for all of you who are giving love and support to our family and families like us. It honestly, it means the world to us.